G'day everyone, welcome to Brushes with Beck. Today's video is a paper test really. I'm working on a Claire Fontaine paper. This is the Paint On paper by Claire Fontaine in the natural colour. And it's supposed to allow colour pencil, marker, fine liner and you know paint as well. So I just wanted to see how well it held up to those water-based um, mediums. So I've got a little a5 piece here and I've just drawn a little hopping mouse here this is a native Australian species and I'm going in with my Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura watercolour pencils and also the Derwent drawing pencil for the whites in the eye there so I've never used this paper with a wet medium before though I have used it with colour pencil before and you know I had no idea how it was going to hold up to the paintbrush and the water so I went in very lightly with the water application first and then more heavily towards the end and it actually held up quite well. I had trouble as I often do with my watercolour pencils getting a smooth gradient. I think I didn't use enough water in those areas on the left hand side of the background. And then on the right hand side of the background I used more water but then I had issues around the rim of the mouse or I was scrubbing a little bit with the brush and it did the paper did pill up a little bit not a lot but there was a tiny bit there where I overworked it so that's probably more my technique than the actual paper itself potentially but once it had dried it really easily allowed me to layer more pencil on top and I was also able to reapply water with the brush afterwards. So the main area that I really only did this was with the white areas on the mouse. I reapplied a layer of white there and re-wet that and that was no problem at all. So I found the, the colours of the pencils went down really well over this natural brown colour paper, this natural sort of tan sandy colour and didn't have any problem getting vibrancy of colour and as you can see even the white was quite bright over the colour on this paper. So once I had done all the background elements I moved on to finishing up the colour on the mouse. My goal for this piece was I wanted to see whether using the wet medium would affect the quality of the paper afterwards and whether I could then apply a colour pencil over the top because it's quite common to combine watercolour and and dry pencils in one piece. Watercolour that creates a beautiful uh, vibrant base layer to cover the surface of the paper and then you can work in details over the top with colour pencil. So I really wanted to see how that worked out on this paper, whether the paper could stand up to the wear of the water and then accept colour pencil and also the concern of well maybe once I've applied water to the paper the surface texture of the paper may have changed a little bit and I may not be able to get pale colours over the top. But as you can see I'm working here with a Faber-Castell Polychromos Ivory and also a Derwent Colour Soft White and both of those colours went down very easily over the top of the watercolour pencil once it had dried. So both of those came up nicely because there was still some texture on this paper. Now this paper has varied textures between the two surfaces. The front surface is a little bit more textured than the back and I did use the front surface for this one because I wanted to be sure I did have enough paper texture to grip the colour pencil after I'd used the watercolour on it. So as you can see those little fur strands do stand out quite nicely they're still nice and fine and detailed and I didn't have any problems at all applying the colour pencil over the top of the watercolour and that's what I really wanted from this piece. So if you are enjoying this video please do ask that you give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for new art content every single week and if you'd like to support my channel further I do now have a super thanks button just down below you can click that and leave a small monetary donation which enables me to purchase different art materials to try out to create videos for and also and also in getting better filming equipment. So back to the video. So moving on you can see I'm detailing in all that beautiful little fur on this mouse. I've gone in with some sort of uh, ready browns, some tanny colours and I'm detailing in some fine greys as well. Just trying to get a little bit of depth in that fur, getting those 
under fur tones, which is that darker grey in around the brighter strands of fur. And also detailing in the eye as well, because I felt like I wasn't quite sure how dark to go on the fur without the eye um, really detailed in. And once that was in, that really popped out with the rich black colour that it was and really illustrated, you know, how big and bold the eye of this cute little animal is because they are a nocturnal animal so they've got these really big beady eyes so they can see better at night. So just moving through this and adding a variety of colours, I did apply that sort of, I think it's an India red in the ears and try to blend out with a pink but it didn't really smooth out like I expected it to, it left the texture there quite strongly. But that's okay. Moving on to the body of the mouse and just applying all that fur texture over the top with the main fur colour before going in and adding in the darker variances in colour and the greys and the highlights as well. So this piece came together pretty quickly um, but it turned out quite nicely. The camera does wash it out a little bit. It's nice and bright like that but it is a little bit washed out on camera. But I'm just going in and really just laying all the fur strokes. I tried to work my fur strokes around each other rather than over the top of each other. So I worked my light fur strokes in between the base tone fur strokes and the same with the dark ones as well. So I wasn't messy with those. I did sort of plan where everything was going but it was still a quick little piece because of the size of it. So just working in some details on the whites there and working through that area. So at this point I realised my mouse was starting to look really good but my background was a bit washed out by comparison to the mouse because you can see I've got some nice darker tones in the mouse fur and some rich reddy tones and a nice bit of texture in there but my background is very soft uh, by comparison. I wasn't worried about the green in the background but I did want to do something with the log in the front. So with that log I did then go in and I used uh, some colour pencil over the top of that and I didn't detail it, I didn't make it um, in depth um, but it, the mouse needed grounding with the darker shadow which is the first thing I'll do in a second and then I also used the brows to just go over and richen rich and make the colour of the log more rich. It needed to be darker and deeper and also using the colour pencils and just shading over the top of that watercolour allowed me to add a grainy texture to that log as well and that was an advantage in this piece of the paper texture showing through above the watercolour is that it enabled me to make the log look more rough than it would have otherwise. Now I used a fair bit of blue on the far end of the log and that was just to help make it look more distant and more washed out as it got further away from you and not grab too much attention. I didn't want to make that back section of the log too dark but I did darken up the front section quite a bit. I added in the mouse's shadow more strongly and just added some variances in colour and texture on the log there before filling in the mouse's whiskers and calling it done. So as you can see there's the finished piece. I think it turned out really really nice and once again if you liked it give the video a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you again next week for another one. Stay creative!